Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush Sajdeva and in this video I'll be showing you how to get yourself started with Google Cloud Platform in a few easy steps and use the GCP services free for the next 3 months including $300 of free GCP billing credit. This video is the first video in the series Namaste Google Cloud which will be an ongoing series. If you are new to my channel, hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon to get notified about all my upcoming videos. Without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, to register a free GCP account, you would head over to google.com and search for GCP free tier. Then hit over to the first link. And over here, it will have an option to get started for free. Click on that. Once you do that, you'll be presented with a sign up wizard. So make sure you verify your account information, your name, your email address. If you want to use a different email address than your Chrome profile, then click over here, switch account and use the other address that you want to use. So this free trial account comes with $300 of free credit that you could spend in next 90 days. There are some limitations of using this credit and many of the services will still be chargeable. So make sure you watch the video till the end because I'll tell you some important details, some important insights about how to use it completely free and what are the limitations of it and what all the things that you need to keep in mind so that you won't get overcharged. So once the trial period ends, you won't be getting overcharged unless you manually upgrade to a paid account. This is written over here as well. Okay, so let's uh, continue with the sign up. So you verify your country and select the one that is regional to you. Okay, for me it's Canada. Then select what best describes an organization or needs. So let's select personal project. Check mark this box i have read and agree to the free trial terms of services and hit continue then it will ask you to enter your phone number for identity verification okay and hit send code it will send a code to your phone number once you receive that you enter the code over here and hit verify then your contact information will be verified and then it will auto populate your name and address from your Chrome profile if you have an active one or you could just manually edit this by clicking on the pencil sign next to it. It will have your payment method and hit on start my free trial. So this payment method could be your credit card or your debit card or your PayPal account. So you can use either of those and then you can hit start my free trial. Once you do that, it will automatically create a billing account and a project for you as the default one. So this is just uh, some feedback uh, survey type question. So you could just hit close for now. And uh, these are some of the tutorials that would get you familiarized with GCP services. So I'll just skip these for now as well. Okay, so this is my GCP console over here and at the top of the page you see my first project. So this is the project. If you have multiple projects then it will appear over here. So let's say I have two projects because I have created one before as well. So there are two projects for me. The name is my first project for each of those because they were auto created and that is why they have the same name but a project is uniquely identified by its project ID, which is this one and which is unique for each of the project, right? So if you want to create a new project, you could click on new project over here and then you could give it a name okay, and provide the organization that you want it to be part of. I don't have any organization currently, so that is why it's not there. We'll have a look uh, over these things like project organizations and everything in the later videos but for this video I'm just gonna give you some basic understanding of GCP and how to get yourself started with it. So I'll hit on the home page over here. Let's uh, discuss some 
more details. So over here, this is your dashboard. All the services that you would provision would appear over here and you could see the real time data like the API request is visible over here. And then you could set up some monitoring dashboards and widgets which will appear over here. From the left side, you would have all your services. So these are the pin services at the top of the page. Pin services are something that you frequently use. So you pin it and they would appear at the top of the page like these many. If you scroll a little down, you'll see more products. That means all the other services that are pinned and unpinned as well. So let's say you would be using compliance frequently. So I just pin it from here. Okay. And once you pin it, it'll appear at this section as well. You see compliance in the pin services. And the same way you could unpin any existing services that has already been pinned. So let's click on unpinning the marketplace. Once you do that, it will be gone from here from the pin services. All right. So this is how you could uh, use your services. So you select the service from here from compute engine. Let's say you want to create a VM instance. So you click on that. So that's one way. Other way is to search it from here. You search for compute engine and click on compute engine, right? So these are the ways you could search a particular service in GCP project. Now there are different ways of interacting with the cloud services. One is through console that we are already looking into. Other is RESTful APIs, which is programmatical access to the GCP services. And the third one is using the cloud shell or the G cloud commands. So you see a button over here which says activate cloud shell. If you click on that, a shell will be provisioned to you. A screen over here which you could just expand as per your comfort level. Okay, so cloud shell comes with the cloud SDK which is G cloud, cloud code and an online code editor as well with all the utilities pre-installed for you. So you then don't have to worry about any installations and everything. And it is also free for all the users. So you hit continue and it will provision a cloud shell for you. All right. So by default, it will create from your email ID at the rate cloud shell. And if you do a PWD in this, a home directory will be created for you as well. Okay. There are different options from it. Then you have terminal settings. In terminal settings, you could go to terminal preferences and change the color theme from dark to light or custom. Change the text size. Let's go for the large one. And the same way you could just uh, change other settings as well, such as your font, your copy settings, your keyboard and the scroll bar as well. So these are all the settings that we have. Then it has a web preview option web preview if there is a service that is already running on port 8080 let's say you have an nginx server or an apache web server running on port 8080 you could just click on preview on port 8080 and, and it will show you the preview of that particular application or you could change the port as well if you want to use a custom port then this particular section will have some session information and if you click on these three dots over here on the more you'll have option to restart the cloud shell and upload and download files. So to upload a file, it's pretty simple. You click on the upload, you choose the file and then you hit upload from here. And the default directory is your home directory. You could change it from here as well. All right. And the same way you could download the file. So this is the cloud console plus this is cloud shell. And then we have another option, which is open editor. So as I have mentioned before, it comes with an online code editor. So if I click on that, okay, it will provision a code editor for you. So this is a code editor, which looks pretty similar to Visual Studio Code or PyCharm or Atom or the other integrated development environments that you might be familiar with. So it will have an explorer, a version control and a few other things, right? So I'll just open a folder from here file open 
and this is my home directory in the cloud shell hit over here and this is the folder that is already there so it has one file currently readme and cloud shell.txt if i click on that it will open the file in the right mode let's create a new file file new file and then give it a name test.txt let's add some content to it namaste google cloud and i hit on control s or you could just save it from file menu as well file save okay basically the same thing and then you could just switch to a terminal from here open terminal if i click on ls over here now you would have two files one which was already there and this is what we have created if we cat on this particular file you would see the content that we have just entered so instead of using vi editor or any nano editor which is a command line you would have a gui based editor and you could again go to that editor from here okay so this is one way the other way of using it you open it in a new window from here click on that and once you do that you don't have to switch between your cloud shell and editor so it will be presented to you in a split screen so you see at the bottom of the page this is the cloud shell and over here is your co-editor okay. so these were the other things so let me just close the cloud shell all right this is what i was talking about free tier usage limits so even though you would have 300 dollars of credit that you can spend in next 90 days once you start using the free tier account but it will have some limitations attached to it first and foremost not all the services of google cloud are covered in the free tier limit so make sure you understand this very well before you start using any service so these are the services that are covered over here and uh, let's say if you want to know what are the limitations attached to compute engine then you scroll down to this section over here which says compute engine and it will tell you like one non preemptible e2 micro vm instance per month in one of the following us regions so if you create any other vm than e2 micro in any other region except the ones that are mentioned over here then you will be charged as per the standard rates similarly 30 gb of monthly ssd disk that you can use free of cost anything more than that would be charged as per the standard billing rates and and so on so there are things that you can see over here as well right so the same applies to all the other resources that are covered under the free tier right like gke as well and google maps pubsub and so on if you scroll down a bit it says any usage above free tier limit is automatically billed at the standard rate you can monitor your control cost by setting up budgets and alerts so this is really important then production ready images that are there with google marketplace comes with premium os licenses that are not covered in free license as well you still have to pay for the licensing cost of the services that you would use right also billing support is included with all the cloud billing accounts but you should be a billing administrator to interact with the billing support and other thing that you need to keep in mind is this technical support for free trial users will end on 15th june so you won't be getting any support from uh, gcp technical support team for the free trial accounts after 15 june then if you want to have the technical support from the google then you should upgrade your support plan so make sure you read all the things over here that's been mentioned and i'll paste this document link in the description section as well so that uh, you could keep it handy follow it along and you should be good to go all right guys this was it for this video as this was a short video i just wanted to get yourself started with the gcp services I hope this video was somewhat helpful to you and you have learned something from it. 
If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so, you could also click the bell icon to get notified about all my upcoming videos. And if you have any questions or queries, feel free to drop a comment on the video and I'll be more than happy to help you out. I will see you soon with the next video. Till then, take care of yourself.